Hey everybody, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring, and this is episode eight of my 10 part series on the strategies for the digital SAT. And in this episode, I'm gonna talk about a strategy that you might not have thought about yourself, app or scrap. When does it make sense to use the digital tools available to you in the Blue Book app? And when should you default to something more basic like pencil and scrap paper? This is the kind of question you might not think to even ask yourself, which is all the more reason you should subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna think of it for you and I'm gonna post the video and you will learn something new that you never even thought for yourself. So let's just dive right in and talk about what the Blue Book app even looks like. This is the benefit of a digital SAT is it lets us do some new cool things. So first of all, in the reading section, you can highlight or underline specific words, but it's not that simple. So the first thing is this does not apply to the math section. We cannot easily highlight in the math section unless we use the keyboard shortcuts, which wouldn't be easy to do if we were taking the test on a tablet. So just keep that in mind but mostly reading is where you'd wanna use this anyway. And what it lets you do is it lets you highlight specific words and type yourself little notes about those words, but only words that are in the passage or in the question, not words that are in the individual answer choices. And if you've watched the other episodes about the reading strategy, individual words and the answer choices is like the big strategy for the entire reading section. So we're kind of at a loss there that we can't do that. Personally, I also find it kind of cumbersome to highlight the words and hit the buttons and type things. So this is just not a feature that I personally use very often. And we'll see how scrap paper might kind of supplement that in a better way. But just to talk about some other things, we can cross out answer choices as a whole on all the sections. I think that is very useful. I also think it's great that we can bookmark questions, especially when we're taking the, the real test and the time error is ticking. We might need to move on before we're totally ready. And so to, to be able to bookmark it and go back is really useful. And as you probably know already, you can use the Desmos calculator that is built into the app for all the math sections. You can also use your own calculator too, but the Desmos one is built in as well as a geometry reference reference chart for all of those formulas. But here's the key piece, and this is what we're gonna focus on in this episode. None of your notes are saved. So especially when you are taking a practice test, you can do all the annotating that you want, but once you hit submit, those things are gone. You'll get your answers back, you'll know what you got right and wrong, but you won't have all the work that you did to kind of get to that answer. So this is really important, especially in reading, if we're trying to learn from our mistakes and improve, we need to be able to go back and, and look at our reasoning and think about why we picked what we picked so that we don't make those same mistakes again. And just to let you know, scrap paper is given to you in all sections. So we can use the scrap even in reading where you might not think it's that useful. We're going to need it, at least when we practice, to get better at the reading section. And I hope to show you how that's going to work. But one piece of advice for the real test, make sure that you are not shy about asking for more scrap paper if you need it. They're only gonna give you a few sheets to start and you wanna make sure that you're always, you have a, a good supply ready for whatever your section you're doing. So don't be shy about that. You deserve more paper. Make sure you ask for it. But let's start by talking about some math questions and try to find that line. When would we use the app? When, we, when, when would we write things down? Um, when might we do work in our heads? So here are three questions that all ask about the same concept, the median of a set of data. And I organize them by difficulty. So uh, number one being the easiest, number three being the hardest. But let's start with number two, kind of somewhere in the middle. And this is a case where the app might be really, really useful, especially if you don't remember what median is. Because if you use the Desmos calculator and either type the word median or select it from the list of functions and then just type all the numbers that they gave you, it's going to just tell you what the median is. And you might remember that median is the middle number when the, the numbers are in order. And so if they give you a list like number two where they're not in order, you don't need to put them in order. Just let the calculator do it for you. So I think this is a case where it might be really efficient to use the calculator if the list is relatively short. But of course, the scrap paper is not so bad here. We would just rearrange the list and write it on our page in order from least to greatest. And then I learned how to find median by just kind of crossing out numbers until we got to the middle. So I'd cross out the first and last number, then cross out the second and second to last number, and then just work my way until I got the median, which you can see is the same as we got with the calculator, 19 in both cases. So this is, again, especially helpful if you don't remember what median is, but you really should, and the writing it out on scrap paper is not that much harder here. But let's back up. Let's look at question number one, where this time we have a list or ask the same thing to find the median, but the list is in order. 
This is a case where I wouldn't bother putting it in the app because just typing it is wasting time. If me median is the middle number and they're in order, I can just kind of look at it and solve it by kind of crossing it out with my own hands. So I would kind of just put my hands by the screen and then slowly move them towards the middle, right? One number from each end at a time until we get to that middle number and there you go. So for this kind of question, which is a real question, I would not even show any work. It would all just be in my head. I would be using my hands to just kind of slowly cro cross off the answers. But number three is more likely what we're gonna see, a frequency chart where instead of listing the numbers, they give us the, the, the condensed version, right? They're telling us in this chart that the number 14 is in our list nine times, 15 is in our list six times, 16 five times, 17 once, 18 twice, right? So we could go to the Desmos calculator, type out the word median, type out the, all the numbers, but we have to make sure we take the frequencies into account. So that means we're typing the number 14 nine times, the number 15 six times. And there might be longer lists that the SAT gives us. And just remember, every time we type a number, that's another chance to make a mistake, another chance to mistype, and the calculator isn't gonna know that you did that, so it's gonna give you the wrong answer. So this is a case where I would not rely on the app. I would use scrap paper. I would draw a rough version of the chart, and then the way that I learned to find median when I have a frequency chart is I'm crossing out in, in groups. So I would go to the smallest frequency that's either at the top or the bottom, and I would start with that. Let's cross out the two, and crossing out the two really means we've crossed out both of the 18s. And I need to cross out two numbers at the top of the list to kind of compensate for that, to even things out. So I, I have nine 14s and I'd cross out two of them so now I only have seven left. And I would continue this process. I would cross out the one 17 and that would cross out one of the remaining 14s leaving me with six left. Then I would cross out all five of the 16s and that would still leave me with one 14. And now since the lowest frequency is at the top, I would go to there, I would cross out the one remaining 14, and that would leave me with five 15s. And since that's the only number left, now I know that is the median. And I would do this on the real test because I think that I, I do not trust myself to do this work in my head by just looking at the screen, looking at the chart. Uh, I would definitely wanna write it down. But the benefit there as well on practice is that if I do make a mistake, I can go back, I can look at my work and see where I went wrong. So in math, at least, having work gives you something to go back on. And in my experience, most people make way more mistakes than they think they will. So having work is a way of catching mistakes uh, in the moment and after the fact when you're reviewing your test. But let's talk about reading, where we don't think of showing work as that important, but it's just the same as in math. If we show work, we are less likely to make a careless mistake. But on reading, the strategy kind of changes based on the kind of question and, and based on whether you're, using, uh, the, you're doing a practice test or you're taking a real test. So let me show you that difference by starting with what I would do if this were a practice test. I would start by reading the question, which choice best describes the function of the underlying sentence in the text as a whole? Then I would go to the text as a whole and I would read it and I would try to give myself a sense of what's going on. So let's just read it together. For thousands of years, human beings have looked up at the skies to study comets, but only during the past few hundred have we been able to confidently speculate about the chemical composition of these comets. Increasingly powerful telescopes and mass spectrometers have painted a picture of dusty snowballs hurtling through space, their icy cores boiling away as the comets made their periodic journeys to the sunny center of our solar system. For better or worse, that picture has never told the whole story. New research into trace elements tells us that comets were once much more varied and much more unpredictable. Now again, this is a practice test. I'm gonna take my scrap paper and I'm gonna write the question number and A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to take notes basically on my thinking so that if I get this question wrong, I can go back and I can see why did I pick that? What was I thinking? Why did I cross out the other answer choices? For this question on the real test, I think I would be able to do this in my head. I'll show you what I would do on the app if this were the real test, but it is a difference because I think this is a relatively easy question, but for a practice test, I don't wanna take anything for granted. I want to get that practice and I want to have a record of what I was thinking. So the first thing I would write is next to the number four, I would be like, okay, what was this sentence about in my own mind, right? So to me, they're basically saying, okay, I never told the whole story, so we have some incomplete info. We don't know everything about comments, I guess. Then I would go to the answer choices and I'd kind of do the same. What stands out in those choices? Choice A. 
It suggests that scientists have an incomplete theory about the chemical composition of the solar system. So that sounds really, really good. But I also noticed that the word solar system or the phrase solar system is not quite right. They've gotten, they've kind of made us fall for a trap here. This is a good example of the like um, main character trap that I talk about in episode seven, where the main character of the passage is comets, but the main character of this choice is the solar system. And, and that's a change. And that's an important thing to notice. And so I would want to write that down as a way of showing myself, hey, I noticed it. This is why I got rid of it. Now looking at B, it highlights the slow pace of research into the origins of comets. Well, it does say it took a hundred years or several hundred years, but I don't think that's the main point. They aren't really making a big deal about how slow it was. It's just kind of them telling the story. So that word bothers me. I would cross out that answer choice on my scrap paper as I go. Looking at C, it undermines the assertion that comets play an important role in the solar system. Well, undermine is certainly a strong word. It stands out to me. Uh, maybe this choice feels a little too negative. I don't really remember the passage being this, this negative, but I, it does, you know, I did say that the dumb summary was that there's incomplete info. So maybe, I don't, I don't know, but I'm not gonna cross it out yet. Let's look at D. It introduces the claim that the common understanding of comets is flawed. Well, there's also words that bother me here. Common is one of those quantity words. Uh, that's another potential trap. Flawed, this is very negative. Like, I don't, it's kind of the same problem as C. But if I've got to decide, I'm going to go with D. Mostly because I think, you know, flawed is a little bit weaker of an answer. It does seem to match a little bit more closely with what my dumb summary was. And so hopefully I think that that's going to be right. But notice I'm not crossing out C because that was second best. And if, again, if I get this wrong, I want to be able to go back and I want to see, ah, I was wrong, but I was close, you know? And, and why did I choose this one over the other? Did I miss something? And any time that you watch my, my videos reviewing a practice test, you will hear me kind of rank these choices and talk about specific words. But notice here that I didn't highlight anything in the passage or the question. And so let's move into what would it look like on an app if I were doing this, on the, the test itself, especially if this were the real test, I, I would probably not write this out. I, I think this question is simple enough that I could do it in my head. I'd probably just have used the cross out feature to cross out A and B as I read them because I, I was really confident they were wrong. I wouldn't have crossed out C right away, but when I read D, I would have been like, okay, that feels like the right answer and I would have just circled it. So I wouldn't have used the highlight feature. I wouldn't have annotated anything. That's all stuff that I just think is more efficiently done in my head for a question like this. But again, if you subscribe to my channel and you watch my videos, I will be doing a lot of highlighting. I'm just doing it in those videos to um, basically show you in the easiest way possible what my thinking is. So it's different when I show you on the, uh, the screen versus what you or I would actually do on the screen for a real test. But there is there are gonna be cases on the real test where I would use scrap paper. So this case, the, the only reason I'm using it is for a practice test that I have a record of what I did. And if I do happen to get it wrong, I can understand my thinking when I go back and review. But for next, the next question, number five, this is gonna be a hard one where I would absolutely be using scrap paper during the real test. So let me show you why. Let's read the question first. Which finding, if true, would most directly support the researcher's hypothesis? Okay, it's gonna be like one of those logic questions. Studies of biodiversity in African grasslands have found that even a temporary increase in elephant migration through certain areas correlated with a wider variety of plant species in those same areas 10 years later. It's very dense. Researchers hypothesized that the elephants destroyed some large trees as they passed through these areas, which created openings in the canopy that allowed sunshine to reach seedlings that would have been otherwise unable to grow. So again, scrap paper, I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm writing my number and I'm giving myself my four answer choices. And again, real test, I'm doing this. This question is too confusing. I have no idea what's going on. But I'm going to use the idea of a dumb summary, which I covered in episode one. You should definitely watch that if you haven't. And I'm going to try to condense this. And so for me, there's a lot of like increase and decrease. I'm going to try to express that in a much more simplistic way. Basically, what they're saying is there's an increase in elephant migrations this causes a decrease in the number of big trees, and then that ultimately leads to an increase in the other plants. So increase, decrease, increase, okay? Now I'm gonna go to my answer choices and try to do the same thing. Let's, let's condense it, let's try to get arrows and, and trends and all that stuff, and, and let's just see if any of them match with what we wrote for the dumb summary. A, areas that did not see an increase in elephant migration also exhibited an increase in plant diversity over a 10-year period. So they're saying that elephants are equal, 
but the plants have increased. So I like the last part, but elephants equal, that that doesn't seem like to match with what we said, but I don't know. I'm just too confused here to, to pick or cross out at this point. So I would just move on to B. Grasslands in other parts of the world have exhibited a general decrease in total area covered by tree canopies during the past 10 years. So the trees are going down. That seems good. That matches with what we said. But it does talk about other parts of the world, and that feels like a more traditional strong words kind of trap. Uh, are we, you know, we have this very specific example of the African grasslands, but now they're kind of blowing it up into some bigger idea. This maybe is like a bigger, big versus small trap, which I talk about in episode seven. Um, so I, I don't know. Again, I'm not going to cross it out, but I'm going to note those words that bothered me. Choice C. Most of the increase in diversity in these areas involves small shrubs and flowering plants, while species of large leafy trees decrease in number. Okay, decrease in trees sounds good, needs to an increase in the diversity of their plants. I don't know, that seems to match, but let's look at D. Plant diversity in these areas had significantly increased before the elephant migrations through these areas occurred. So this also has an increase in elephant migrations, an increase in plants, but that word before, I'm gonna note that because that's another one of those potential traps that bothers me, right? Anytime they talk about time in a choice, chronology, something happened first, second, whatever, I get nervous, I have to prove that. So notice, this is also flipping the chronology of what the passage says. For them, the elephants were the first to arrive. Choice D is suggesting that the elephants are last. So even though the arrows are in the right direction, in this case, I would be pretty confident that C is the answer because it still matches my trend, but it does it without this added element of time, and that's a little bit safer. That's a little bit weaker, and that's probably going to be a better bet. But notice, I'm crossing out A and B because I'm sure that they don't match, but D, I'm leaving uncrossed out because if I do have more time in this section, I might want to come back and look at this, and I want to know very quickly, what was I thinking? What choices was I between? Because I don't want to have to solve the question from square one again. So in this case, the scrap paper that I'm showing you would definitely appear for me on a practice test, but I would definitely also be doing this on the real test. This question is so confusing, I need to have a record of it. But of course, circling it on the scrap paper doesn't get us the answer. In the app itself, we're also going to need to mark the answer. But notice here for the app, I'm not highlighting, I'm not underlining, I'm not even using the cross out feature. If this is the real test, I've done all the work on the page, the app is really just gonna capture my right answer. I might bookmark the question so that I can come back, but otherwise, there's not a whole lot of work in the app itself for a question like this because it's so complex. I, I need that, that traditional pencil and paper to make sense of it. And that's really what I want you to take away from this, is that pencil and paper, just because they're low tech, are not uh, not bad. They are very useful tools. They give you a lot of freedom that a digital platform kind of restricts. So there are benefits to having that freedom to write anything, arrows, symbols, whatever. Um, but also, we have to think about the differences between practicing for the SAT and taking the SAT. And I know that you normally don't want the strategies to diverge that much, but certainly on a practice test where we're gonna have the opportunity to review our answers, we need to have a record of our thinking. And I promise you, you're not gonna remember it as well as you think. There's just too many questions, it's too long of a test, you're gonna be exhausted, so you're not gonna remember what you were thinking, especially if you review it on a different day using one of my videos. So write it down, be organized, and that way you can go back and be like, oh yeah, that's why I picked this. Oh, I missed that word. Oh, that word I thought was bad. I guess I, I can prove it. So you have a record of your thinking. It's still true in math. You're, and I think in math, you're more inclined to show work just out of habit. But it's very often ignored how important showing work is in reading. And like I said, practice tests, we need to do it. On the real test, if you want to cut some corners, I understand because you do have the, the time crunch of the test. And Showing this work probably does take a little bit longer. So you'll need to find that balance for yourself where questions get so hard that you need to write things down, but where they're easy enough that you might be able to do it all in your head. Generally speaking, you probably need to write more down than you are. So that's my last piece of advice for that. So remember, I'm gonna talk about uh, all the strategies and I'm always gonna show my work when I do my explanation videos. I'll try to tell you whenever I do write something down on my own page that, that the work I'm showing on the screen would match that on the page. So that way you can also try to sense when you should be writing things down, when you can do them in your head, when the app is the best way, and when the scrap is the best way. So I hope this gives you a starting point. Thank you so much for watching and remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less. 
Satel for more.